If you're trying to land your first data analyst job, I've got some sad news. I don't think that you should learn Python. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Python. It's my favorite data tool, and it's absolutely incredible. It can basically do anything, and it's an awesome tool to analyze data. But there's just a few reasons I don't think you should learn it when you're just starting out. In this episode, I'll explain why and tell you what to focus on instead. Welcome to the Data Career Podcast, the podcast that helps aspiring data professionals land their next data job. Here's your host, Avery Smith. Python has really built momentum over the last 20 years and become one of the most used data tools out there. I mean, I totally see why. It's free, it's open source, there's over 137,000 libraries that include amazing data tools that make your life as a data analyst way easier, like Pandas for data handling, Plotly for data visualization, and Scikit-learn for machine learning. So why don't I think that you should learn it? Two words, opportunity, cost. Opportunity cost is the loss of potential gains from other alternatives when one alternative is chosen. When you're first starting out in data, there are just better things to learn first. Things that don't require near as much time as it does to learn Python. You see, Python's learning curve looks something like this. It takes a long time before you see any progress. It's actually pretty maddening. In the beginning, I'm talking like the first six weeks, you will probably feel that you're making little to no progress. And there's a couple different reasons for this. Number one, the installation is very tricky. Python is actually just flat out hard to download and use. Most people probably Google download Python, and that makes sense, that's what I would do too, and click on the first link, or the second link, or the third link, or the fourth link. All of these direct you to python.org, which is a great website. You can click it and download it and everything goes fine, but most people really get stuck trying to figure out how to actually open it up. The reason is downloading Python this way does not give you an IDE or interactive developer environment or in simple terms, a good place to open up, play around and actually code in Python. You're really limited to using the command prompt when you download it this way, which is very difficult for most users. I don't like the command prompt either. And then once you have vanilla Python installed, you'll eventually want to download and use one of those 137,000 libraries and that in itself is actually very difficult. It's hard to get these libraries on your machine. So to beat all these installation problems, I recommend using a browser only version to get started, something like DeepNote or Hex, or you can download and install the Anaconda distribution as it comes with a lot of great IDEs and libraries and makes the whole process a little bit more simple. The number two reason it's hard to get started is it's a programming language. It takes time to learn how to program. And as the term indicates, it is a language. It wouldn't be easy to learn, say, Japanese or Swedish in a week, would it? Neither is Python. Learning to program is a skill that takes time to learn. There's even a whole new vocabulary you have to learn in the programming world. Things like loops, functions, variables, operators, recursion, list comprehension, namespaces, just to name a few. These things are actually very complex concepts and it takes a while to understand fluently what's going on. BI tools like Power BI or Tableau have a less steep learning curve because they're really just drag and drop or click and point, very similar to how PowerPoint works. It's just a lot easier to learn them faster. Personally, I think that you can get to proficiency in one of these BI tools in about a month, but I think it would take around six months to feel the same level of comfort in Python. So simply stated, I personally think it's six times harder to start in Python than something like Tableau. The third reason it's actually really hard to get started is Python can literally do anything. You don't use SQL to make data visualizations as it's really just meant to query data. You don't use Tableau to build some sort of machine learning model as it's meant to create and display dashboards. But Python, it's the Swiss army knife of data. It can literally do anything that you can do in data and a lot more. So mastering Python would really require you to master all forms of data analysis in one go, which is absolutely impossible. You can't do it. But let's just say that you're not listening, you're like this dog, you ignored all of this, and you still think Python's easy. Or maybe you understand it's hard, but you still feel the need to learn it. Well, let me give you this fact. Python is at best the third most popular data tool for data analysts. This is according to Luke Barus's job scraping data, and this is for all data analyst positions, junior and senior. But from my personal experience, I literally stare at data analyst jobs all day, every day, my guess is that number is actually much closer to 20% for entry-level data analyst roles. Senior roles typically rely on Python a lot more than these junior-level roles do. 
That basically means four out of the five jobs don't even mention the use of Python. So think about it. Are you really going to slow your job search down by six months to learn a tool that isn't even mentioned 80% of the time? I'm no math expert, but the math isn't mathing here for me. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Especially when you consider my next point, and that is that many companies will actually pay you to learn Python. Landing that first data job, getting your foot in the door in the data world, that's the hardest part. You wanna do that as soon as possible. Because once you're in, getting promoted and upskilling is so much easier. It is a lot easier to land a new job when you already have a data job. A lot of the time, you can actually use company time and resources to learn new data skills. For example, when I worked at ExxonMobil, they wanted me to get better at Python. So they actually let me study Python for one to two hours every week on company time using the company's LinkedIn learning account. How awesome is that? So instead of waiting six months to apply to jobs, I was able to get paid to learn. So I'll ask it this way very simply. Which would you prefer? Slowing your job hunt down to learn a skill that isn't necessary 80% of the time or getting paid to learn that skill down the road? The choice is yours. If you make the choice to learn Python, which once again is not what I would necessarily suggest, here's what you should know and in what order. Number one, variables, print statements, three, mathematical operations, four functions, five loops, six IDEs, seven libraries. The big ones in data to know are pandas, matplotlib, seaborn, plotly, and numpy. How to read data in with pandas, descriptive analytics with pandas, filtering with pandas, and data visualization. I like seaborn for getting started. I think it is the prettiest and the easiest to use. If you want to learn more about what data skills you should be focusing on at the beginning, you can either watch this video here or there'll be a link to it in the show notes down below. And if you still want to learn Python, I'm excited for you and I love you anyways. If you love me, maybe you can hit subscribe.